dear friends in this video i shall be showing a case in which i had a posterior capsular wrench but could manage to implant an in the back iol and 13 years into fake surgery and yet learning steps every day this was a great free cataract a bit heavy but i did not expect much problems more so because i had done the other eye just a few months back without any complications the case is being done on the topical anesthesia incision is made vessels by a 26 kg needle i will not be showing you the whole of the surgery i won't bore you with those details but i just want to emphasize that it is never late to learn and i did learn a few tricks which i tried it on this case and could manage with a good result i did a stop and chop after the trench i could crack the nucleus into two halves with a blunt chopper and the paper tip and i proceed with a horizontal chopping The steps are going comfortably, and I don't foresee any problem. Yes, in such cases, I do use sodium hyaluronate to protect the cornea. Now that the most of the muscle package is done, I have a small pieces at the epidermis plate. I usually replace my chopper with an iris spatula. Check the PC and switch over to the epinucleus mode. All fine so far. Then. And I realize that I have ruptured the posterior capsule. Thankfully, after so many years, I don't have that adrenaline rush once. I see a red, so I keep the probe where it was, irrigation on, inflate the AC with Visco, and then gently withdraw, and then assess. Yes, there is a red, about three millimeter to four millimeter, a bit oddly. Thankfully, the whole of the nucleus is out. That could have been tricky, and I just had to deal with the red, the refractory, and. I'm not very sure how much of the nucleus is disturbed, so I would proceed with staining the nucleus with transparent lime. I suspect a strand at the 11 o'clock position coming out of the main port. To confirm it. Inject or cut, and then wash it out immediately after I put in, and that strands coming out from the main port is clearly visible. There's not much of a disturbance at the vent though. One thing that I learned recently is that if you have to use a reflector, okay, I'll come to that later. I'm plugging the red with chondroitin sulfate and the sodium hyaluronate combination. So this is not Oropod. This is a brand called Oxylon Plus, but it works. Now what I was saying is that of late, I've learned. That reflectivity should never be done by the main port, but by the side port. Most of these years, I was using the main port for the reflectivity. So this time, I used the side port. Face up of the reflector, and go to the rent and try to cut the vitreous from. The base from where it is coming out, not the vitreous base, but the base of the red. My only aim is that I should be able to keep. 
speed of the nutrients and to minimize the extension of the well, which happens quite often. I'm sorry it's a bit off center, but I was more worried about the case than the focusing. IA, I'm showing it to you in high speed, although I was being a bit gentle. But with uh, the vitreous cleaned up in the AC, particle removal wasn't a problem. And uh, it was almost like uh, I would have done with the PC impact. The only difference was that before changing hands, I kept the irrigation probe on inside the AC, put in disco again, deepened the bag, deepened the AC, and then came out, changed the hand. At this point, you can see the vent so clearly, almost an egg shaped vent. Now, removing the other side, cotton removal is almost complete. Again, I keep the irrigation on, inflate the RA with AC before I come out. I once again use the reflector because I can still see that strand so just to confirm that if there is any vitreous disturbance after the irrigation aspiration, I will be able to remove that. This time I decide to implant the regular single piece preloaded for the lens. This is a Hoya lens. Most of the times I would have opted for a sulcus fixation lens, a multi piece. But here I thought I will be able to implant it in the bag because the lens has not increased and is much smaller than the optic of the lens. One thing which I have learned now is to inject the lens in the AC first. Earlier on in cases of lens, I would try to put the leading haptic at the designated place, either in the bag or in the circus and quite often would uh, land up with the lens dipping in the nucleus. So here I first inject the lens in the AC, both the haptics are above the iris after injecting a bit disco, dial one haptic in the bag under the axis, rotate the lens to position the other haptic, and under clear vision, dial the second haptic, the trailing haptic, under the axis margin in the bag. Recenter the lens. And I find the lens well centered, pupil fairly round, and I'm satisfied with this end. Now this, I'm just left with the removal of visco. Many times during this procedure also you can find the lens uh, shifting one side of the other. But in this case, the lens was very well centered, properly in the bag, and I could feel the sigh of relief. Thankfully, the patient won't blame me. If there's one I have been good, his other eye is as good. That is the end of the surgery. Thank you very much for watching this video. Happy learning, happy teaching. It's never too late to learn things and improve. Thank you.